Nestled away in South London, at a ground which can hold just 2,000 people, Corinthian Casuals Football Club currently play in the 8th tier of English football. But despite the first impressions, this team is one of the most significant clubs in world football. Corinthian Casuals FC was formed back in 1939 after a merger between Casuals FC and Corinthians FC, the latter side being widely credited with shaping football into the sport that we know and love today. They were formed in 1882 by the Secretary of the FA as a midweek team who only played friendlies that would be made up of England international players. This was so that these players had more time and experience playing alongside each other so that when they played together for the England national team they played well. And because it was just a midweek side, these players could still play for their actual clubs on the weekends. And this theory really did work, with Scotland constantly beating England, to now England constantly beating Scotland. And the Corinthians were playing some nice football themselves, with them beating recent FA Cup winners Blackburn Rovers 8-0 and inflicting Manchester United's heaviest ever defeat, 11-3. Now, as professionalism moved into football in the early 1900s, Corinthians became a touring team instead, travelling to play in places like South Africa and across North America, spreading the game of football. And with this, they inspired many other people too, including two of the founders of Spanish giant Real Madrid, who came to watch Corinthian FC play. These founders loved Corinthians' white shirts and so decided that they would play in the same colour too, leading to the creation of the iconic white Real Madrid jersey. Also, a 1910 tour in Brazil inspired five local railway workers to form the now world-famous Corinthians Polista, who won the Club World Cup back in 2012. One of the places they visited in 1910 was Brazil. The reason for that was that uh, Charles Miller, who's considered to be the kind of grandfather of football in Brazil, mm. he was uh, born of English parents in Brazil. And when he went to school in England, he played a game for Corinthians on one occasion. When they were a player short and visited his school, they asked him to make up the numbers. So when he went back to Brazil and started to develop the game over there, he invited Corinthians to come and play against a team in Sao Paulo. Ah, OK. Um, they were Sao Paulo Athletic Club. Mm. We beat them so convincingly, the Corinthians, and played so well that the locals who were watching were inspired to form their own team. And they called it Corinthians. So now you have Corinthians, Sport Club Corinthians Paulista in Brazil, who are one of the biggest teams in South America and the world. Um, and you have Corinthian Casuals Football Club over here playing still in non-league football in the eighth tier. So there's been a real turnaround in the team's uh, fortunes over those 100 and, what is it, 24 years, or 114 years, I should say. But it was all goes back to that tour in 1910 when we visited Sao Paulo. As for the other merger club, Casuals FC, they were formed back in 1883 and were made up of players from the three schools Eton, Charterhouse and Westminster. The colours of those three schools making up the club's iconic chocolate and pink shirts. Although, like Marmite, you either love them or hate them. In 1939, the two teams came together and almost 100 years later are still playing football today. Carrying on Corinthians' tradition of going on tour, the club have gone on three since the merger, all of them to Brazil to take on the South American Corinthians. In a 1989 game, Brazilian legend Socrates featured for both sides and the other games were in 2001 and 2010, both in front of tens of thousands of fans. It must have been an incredible experience for all involved with both clubs. So if you speak to the people that went on those tours, they say it's the, the most incredible football experience they ever had. You wow. know, they're used to playing in non-league football um, in front of a few hundred people. Um, and then when they went to uh, Brazil, they were greeted at the airport by uh, fans singing uh, Corinthian songs and holding banners. Uh, and uh, everywhere they went, there was a big media fanfare. So those, those games in 88, 2001 and 2015 were all very special in their own ways. The one in 88, um, David Harrison, who's still on our committee now, um, and he'll be at the game today, I hope, um, he was part of the organising committee for that tour, and he arranged on the bus to the game with Socrates, who was this great uh, Brazil captain yeah, of the uh, 82 World Cup. Um, he arranged that uh, it would be great if he could change teams towards the end of the game. So with, I think 
uh, 17 minutes to go. He switched, uh, uh, swapped shirts with a, a Corinthian Casuals player and they switched sides. And he said he played out the rest of the game for Corinthian Casuals. And the game ended 1-0 and he had scored the goal for Corinthians All-Stars, which was like a Legends eleven. Um, but then he hit the crossbar for Corinthian Casuals and nearly equalised his own goal, which would have been <laughs> unique in football history. Um, so that was an incredible one. Um, and then in 2015, the um, first teams met for the first time in history. So it's the, the only game to date where the first teams of Corinthians, Paulista and Corinthian Casuals have played one another. Right. Um, and that was 3-0 to Corinthians. And that's the game uh, that forms the centrepiece of the film Brothers in Football, um, which I think is still available to watch. Um, uh, so I urge people to look that up and watch it. It tells the story of our club brilliantly. And you'll see a banner behind the goal today that says, Brothers in Football, play for us. Um, that banner was sent over from Sao Paulo by the fans of Corinthians who debuted the banner at Corinthians Arena for a game in the Brazilian Serie A and then sent it over here for us to have permanently behind the goal. Fortunately, today we're going to have uh, visitors from Gavi Ostafil, who are one of the biggest supporters clubs of Corinthians in Sao Paulo. Um, they're going to present us with a plaque um, mm. in honour of the 140 anniversary of, of our club, which was two years ago. They had it made in Brazil then, and right. this is the first time we've had the opportunity to bring it over. Um, and they'll be joined by members of Fiel Londres, which is the London-based supporters club of Corinthians. I know you said there's also going to be some supporters of Athletic Club coming over as well. That's right, um, yeah. They're doing a, did you say a raffle there's going to be? How yes. did that all come about? So Athletic Bilbao, um, it's a brilliant thing they do. They're one of the biggest clubs in Spanish football, um, a Basque club that have won numerous league titles in Spain, mm. numerous uh, Copa del Reyes. They're in the final of the Copa del Rey this year. Um, and they have taken non-league day, which it is today in England, and they've brought that over to the Basque country. So they've introduced the Basque non-league day. Um, and as part of celebrating their, their sort of connections to non-league, they do a thing every, uh, they did a thing every day this week, celebrating one of the English non-league teams who visited uh, Bill Bow to play them in the mm. early days of the development of football over there. Um, and Casuals FC, before they merged, were one of those teams. So Casuals FC um, visited the Basque country and played two games against Athletic Bilbao in 1923. Um, and as a result of that, they uh, have decided to celebrate us as one of the non-league teams that they have a connection to this year. And they've, they've sent us uh, a retro shirt, Athletic Bilbao shirt, and an Athletic Bilbao Basque country flag um, that we can give away in a raffle as competition prizes today. Well, it's a really fascinating story and it's been a great day for me to find out more about this club's incredible background. It's non-league day today, an annual event celebrating the amateur and semi-pro side of the game. And this is the perfect example of why this day exists. Because clubs like Corinthian Casuals, who may not seem like a massive team with a big influence on football at first, really do have a big, big impact. And these teams definitely need to be celebrated more. Thank you for Dominic Bliss for arranging my day here. Thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.